What's going on, YouTube family? It's your boy, Mike Macklin, a.k.a. Money Mike, the financial Thanos. So I'm snapping my fingers, and I'm turning your financial problems to dust. Hey, I want to welcome you to my channel. Definitely appreciate you stopping by and showing some love. Hey, if this is your first time tuning in, I ask you, please, please, please consider liking this video so more people can see it, subscribe, and also hit that notification bell. That way you know every time I drop a new video. Now, every Tuesday and Thursday, what I like to do is I like to do different reaction videos to videos that I maybe um, found an interest in. I don't watch these. I like to watch them with you. So I don't watch them. I just kind of look at the subject matter. If it looks interesting to me, I pick it up and I start watching. And today, what I wanted to take a look at is um, the video was talking about um, Warren Buffett giving you advice on how to grow small sums of money. Now, um, in this video, um, the reason I picked it is because I've been talking about investing here the past couple of videos here. And when I talk to people about investing, two, two real main points come up a lot of times. And the first thing that most people say is they don't invest because it's too risky. It's, it's too hard to understand it. It's too difficult. And so instead, they would rather do something more safe, like just put their money in the bank, which I mean, honestly, that's not investing first and foremost, because the, the return you're getting on that is definitely, definitely not going to be something that's going to help you in the long run. It's going to take you forever to really see any real money off of that. So you don't want to you know, find yourself in that situation. Um, now, the second reason that a lot of people um, cite that they don't invest is because they don't have a lot of money to invest now the great thing about what's going on these days is that you know investing costs next to nothing at this point um really they don't really charge a lot to um, manage the funds anymore and a lot of it you can manage yourself you can do yourself um apps like acorns and stash has really made it um possible for you know even the little guys out there with just a little bit of money to put something in there get themselves started and you know begin to see their money grow now this video is kind of um, looks like it's gonna talk about how you can get those small sums of money to do something great for you so again I haven't watched this video we're gonna watch this together and let's let's see what actually goes down here I was thinking the other day about how Warren Buffett is mostly known for his multi-billion dollar investments into companies like Apple and Bank of America but contrary to popular opinion it wasn't always this way and just like you and me, he had to start out quite small too. In 1995, he was asked at his annual shareholder meeting what advice he would give to those working with small amounts of money, just like he once had to do as well. And in this video, he gives us his response. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Howard Love. I'm from That's San Francisco. Thank you very much for this weekend in general and uh, this meeting in particular. Uh, recently at a talk at the Wharton Business School, uh, Mr. Buffett, you indicated that you were talking about the problems of compounding large size, uh, which I appreciate and understand. But you indicated, uh, you're quoted in the local paper as saying that you are confident that if you were working with a sum closer to a million dollars, that you could compound that at a 50% uh, rate. For those of us who aren't saddled with the $100 billion problem, uh, could you talk about uh, what types of investments you'd be looking at and where uh, in today's market you think significant inefficiencies exist? Thank you. Yeah, I, I think I may have been very slightly misquoted, but I certainly said something to the effect that working. I, I think I, I, I talked about this group I get together every two years and how I poll that group as to what they think they could compound money at it with 100,000, a million, 100 million, a billion, and other types of sums. And... I pointed out how this group of 60 or so people that I get together with every couple of years, how their expectations of return would go very rapidly down this slope. Uh, it is true. I think I, I think I can name a half a dozen people <laughs> that I think could compound off the screen. Uh, a million dollars, or at least they could earn 50% a year on a million dollars, have that as an ex expectation. If they needed it, I mean, I'd have to, they'd have to get their full attention to be working on the sum. And those people could not compound money, a hundred million or a billion, at anything remotely like that rate. I mean, there, there are little tiny areas which, if you follow 
what I said on the screen there on that Adam Smith uh, interview a few years ago. If you start with A, and you go through, and you just and you look at everything, and you find small securities in your area of competence that you can understand the business. I think you can, and and occasionally find little arbitrage situations or little wrinkles here and there in the market. I think working with a very small sum that there is an opportunity to earn very high returns, but that that advantage disappears very rapidly as the money compounds because I, you know, from a million to ten million, I would say it would fall off dramatically uh, uh, in terms of the expectable rate because there are little you, you find very very small things that that you know you can make it you're almost certain to make high returns on but you don't right. find very big things that in that category today uh i'll leave to you the fun of finding them yourselves i mean terrible to spoil the treasure hunt uh, and the truth is i don't look for them anymore every now every now and then i'll stumble into something just by accident but but i'm not i'm not i'm not in the business of looking for them I'm, I'm looking for things that berkshire could put put its money in and, and that rules out all of that sort of thing mm. uh, uh charlie well, I would agree, but I would. Uh, Johnny's back. <laughs> I would also say that what we did 40 or so years ago was, in some respects, more simple than what you're going to have to do. Right. We had it very easy compared to you. It can still be done, but uh, but it's it's harder now. You have to know more. I mean. Sifting through the manuals until you find something that's selling at two times earnings. That won't work for you. It'll work, it's you won't find any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now let's elaborate and talk about some of the key okay, points that Warren Buffett and Charlie right. Munger talked about in this video. Now, the first point here is that Warren Buffett believes that he knows about six people who could compound $1 million every single year at a 50% growth rate. Now, this is quite a small amount of people, which means that this is probably very difficult, but it's also not impossible. He also says that those same... Okay, wanted to touch on that real quick, um, because I, I like to keep it real in videos. I really do. Um, we're talking about growing small sums of money really big. Um, the truth of the matter is, is it's very difficult. It's, it's not something that's going to be easy. Um, not to say that it's impossible, but, you know, again, the, the thrill of it is in the, the, the hunt, the treasure hunt, as Mr. Buffett said. Um, it's, it's all about understanding, yeah, hey, maybe your chances might not be that high, but it's not to say that it's zero. And, and I, that's what I like to point out is, hey, look, anything is possible, um, but, keep your expectations, you know, in check at the same time, you know, don't go thinking everything that you pick is going to be a winner. Everything is going to just, you know, be a home run. You're going to have to understand that one, the market is very difficult. It's a, it's a really fickle, um, just all over the place kind of institution. And there's all kind of different players in this, all kind of different philosophies and thought processes. So you have to be really skilled to really see like big boy numbers, but it's not impossible. Six people could not compound a hundred million dollars or a billion dollars at that same growth rate. This essentially means that it's easier to get a great rate of return when you're working with smaller amounts of money. And when you get up to that 10 or a hundred million dollar range, you're not going to get a great rate of return nearly as easily. And this is simply because we have to take the volume of a stock into consideration. And what the volume is, is the amount of shares that any given security mm -hmm. trades in a single day. So for example, if there's a stock that's worth about $2 a share, and it only trades about 100,000 shares a day, it means that there's only a total of about $200,000 trading hands in that one given security. Mm -hmm. Which means that if you want to throw $10 million into that stock, it is going to take months to build your full position. So the larger sums of money that you have, the harder it is to execute on these smaller stock opportunities. Simply because they do not trade that much volume and there's not that much money changing hands in that one company. But again, there are great opportunities to grow your money extremely quickly in these small companies. And we're going to get into more detail as to why a little bit later on in this video. But Okay, real quick on that. I really wanted to break down what he was meaning. Like, you know, your rate of return. Meaning, you know, what you're getting back versus what you're putting in. 
when you got a huge sums of money in these small companies, you know, even if you make, um, as he said in this thing, you know, you put 10 million in, you make 200,000, you know, Hey, that's, that's not a lot of money that you're making, um, what you're putting on from versus what you're putting in, um, $200,000 is a very small percentage of, you know, 10 million versus, you know, you get into something, you know, that has higher volume, meaning they trade more money. You stand to make more money up in these higher echelons versus, you know, Hey, you got small amounts of money, but you know, you got $200,000 in there. You put, you know, maybe 200, $300 in there. You, you stand to make more return on that investment or a higher return on that investment. So that's basically what he means by that is, you know, if you got tons of money in these little things, you don't stand to make a lot of money. But on the other side of that, if you put a small amount of money into some of these companies um, that they've got a, a, a bit more money into them, then you stand to make a higher rate of return because, again, you didn't put a lot of money in, but there's a lot of money to be made. There's room for money to be made. So there's room for, you know, big returns on that investment is basically what he's saying at the end of the day. There's more room for money in the smaller companies when you have, you know, small amounts to put in because you got now you got more difference in what you put in versus what's in there, if that makes sense. But moving on to the next point, this one is find small securities in your own area of competence. And Warren Buffett also likes to refer to this as your own circle of competence. What your area of competence is, is simply just an area of the market or an industry that you believe that you are personally very knowledgeable about. And this could be because you work in the industry or you just know some more about that overall business model that makes you have a little bit of a competitive advantage over other investors who are looking in the space. Staying within your own circle of competence may also give you opportunities that other investors might miss out, simply because you know a little bit more about the industry or a given business in that industry. Warren Buffett himself stays within his circle of competence, and this is why we consistently see him invest in oil companies and financial institutions like Bank of America. By the way, Warren Buffett always recommends staying within your own circle of competence, whether you're investing into a small security or a large cap company. So this really applies to all investing, no matter what you're looking at. Now, moving on. Okay, real t quick to touch on that one, the uh, finest small securities in your area of competence. Basically, you know, when you're looking at these small companies, you want to look at companies in areas that you understand, um, meaning Okay, um, let's say you're an engineer. You know, you have a certain skill set. So, you know, you kind of want to look at companies within your own skill set. Um, if you were a banker, you know more about banking than, you know, somebody who's not a banker. So you'd be able to find some of those small little, you know, um, idiosyncrasies that other people may not, you know, pick up on because you have more of a knowledge of that field. And so now that presents more opportunity for you because you understand that better than somebody else and you can see opportunity where others may not and you can use that to capitalize and again you can turn that small amount of money into great money when you start to find those different you know idiosyncrasies those things that people just don't see that you can based on your skill level um and so he's saying hey look kind of stay within your your zone of knowledge because again the market is crazy and it's, it's all kind of different, you know, factoids and ups and downs about it. So you want to kind of give yourself a better chance um, by, you know, getting involved in something that you actually understand. On to the next point. This is to occasionally find wrinkles in the market. And what Warren Buffett means by finding a wrinkle in the market is to simply find a stock that the market is mispricing, thus creating a little wrinkle that we can take advantage of. And this does happen from time to time. And in my own experience, I seem to find this a lot more in smaller cap companies after they experience quite large sell-offs. These sell-offs cause these smaller companies to sell way below book value and have extremely low financial ratios. For example, Canadian Solar is a stock that we've been talking about a lot recently on my channel. And the first time that I talked about the stock was back in the beginning of July when the stock was selling for just over $20 a share. And when Canadian Solar was selling at just above $20 a share, it was actually selling way below book value, and it had a price to earnings ratio of only 4. Yes, 4. And now, at the time of recording this video, Canadian Solar is selling for above $40 a share, which means that I have more than doubled my money on this one stock in just a few months. 
but this is not a stock analysis video, so I won't get into the details or anything more about that. All I'm trying to say is that there are, in fact, sometimes these little wrinkles in the market where you can identify them and get stocks for incredibly cheap. Now, finding these little wrinkles does take some time, and it can be quite difficult. But as Warren Buffett says, if you can find these wrinkles, then they can provide you with some great opportunity to get some high returns. All right. And okay, so essentially what he's talking about here now is another way that you can kind of give yourself a better chance of, you know, turning that small amount of money to larger amounts of money by finding, you know, little little sleeper companies or, you know, companies that not getting a lot of attention, not a lot of eyes on those companies. Um, you know, Warren Buffett was talking about it before, you know, these smaller companies, his company isn't able to look at those anymore because he's dealing with a lot more volume than, you know, those small companies can even handle or that it'd be worth his time. So for the person starting out or with a lot less money, that gives you that opportunity now to, you know, slide into that, you know, little niche and, and find you something that can you know, really make you a good deal of money just by, you know, again, you, you have less competition there. The big boys ain't playing in that water anymore. So now you got more opportunity to, you know, maybe again, find something that other people don't see in that company or people not looking at before it get real big. And you can jump on that. Um, this is what they mean when they talk about buying a undervalued stock. It's a stock that, you know, again, it's, it doesn't have a lot of volume. The price of it isn't that high. So, you know, you can get in on that and, you know, ride that money on up to the top before it gets, you know, all eyes on it. And now, you know, the whole surprise is gone and, you know, it, you, your room for, you know, big, big money returns kind of diminishes at that point now that all eyes are on it. And moving on to the next point once again, and this one is when working with small sums of money, there is an opportunity for a high rate of return. Kind of and I've we talked, talked about, about this a little mm -hmm. earlier on in the video, but now let's talk about specifically why this is. There are three main reasons for this. The first reason is hedge funds and analysts do not pay attention to smaller securities because they can't invest their large sums of money. So like Warren Buffett, they don't even look or pay attention. The second reason is this lack of coverage means there's less people aware of these undervalued right, opportunities, kind of for which essentially <laughs> means there is much less competition. And the third and final reason is there is not much media attention around these small companies, and many people avoid them altogether because they are seen as speculative investments. So to summarize, there is much less comp. So that that that's the the kind of golden nugget that last point he made about things seeming more speculative. Um, when, when you have to guess a little bit more or you, you're not completely sure, or, you know, again, it's a small company. You're not sure if that company is going to get big or not. Now you're doing what's called speculating. You know, you, you have to kind of, you're taking a gamble, you're rolling dice in a sense. And you know, the big boys ain't going to do that. They, they, they're not going to speculate anymore. They, they, they look at the information, they understand the company and they know, you know, what company is going to do well, what company probably not going to do well because they don't deal with companies that's kind of just starting out. Um, Robert Kiyosaki is another person. I saw a video he was talking about. He don't even look at small companies. Um, the big boys, they don't play in that water. So, you know, again, it, a lot of people won't play in that water either because, again, it's risky and it's looked at as more speculative versus, you know, you get in something where you know it's going to get a consistent return like what I do. Uh, and, you know, you, you make a little bit of money, but it's steady growth and you know it's going to keep coming versus, you know, the person, again, who has a small amount of money looking for big gains, you're going to have to take that risk and you're going to have to um, do a little something different than that person who's just looking for, you know, a kind of co a conservative shift, looking for a sure thing. But again, that's where opportunity comes into play by, you know, hey, if you if you feel comfortable speculating on stocks, then, you know, you stand to, to do pretty well if you're right. Competition in these smaller securities because these large institutions can't even invest in them. So they just avoid them altogether. And with less eyes looking means that there is potentially more opportunity to find undervalued securities. And for those of you who may not know, Warren Buffett actually purchased 100% of the company Seize Candy for only 25 million back in 1992. And this article right here gives us a little bit of a deeper insight into how this small cap investment played out for Warren Buffett. 
So right here this says, Berkshire Hathaway bought sees candy for $25 million in 1972. The year it had roughly $30 million in sales and brought in $4.2 million in profit. As a result of its size, we can't track its results over the decades. But 35 years later, in 2007, Buffett noted sales had risen nearly 13 times to stand at $383 million. Even more impressive... Buffett revealed profits were up nearly 20 times and stood at $82 million. That means Berkshire now earns nearly three times the cost of its original investment each year. But perhaps what is even more remarkable is that in 2011, Buffett said Seeds has brought in a staggering $1.65 billion in total profits since he bought it 40 years ago. And this right here is exactly what I am talking about. Warren Buffett saw an opportunity with a company that was only worth about $25 million. And he did not let this small market capitalization or the fact that this was just a small company deter him from seeing a great opportunity, mm -hmm. and he ended up buying the entire company. And now, as it says right here in the article, Berkshire earns nearly three times the original cost of its investment every single year. So this has played out wonderfully for Berkshire and for Warren Buffett. Also, when these smaller companies go on to become billion dollar companies or multi-billion dollar companies, then these institutions can start investing in them and start paying attention to them. And when these institutions start getting involved, then there is more media coverage, more analyst coverage, and all around more eyes on the stock, which means that the valuation goes up when more people start getting involved. But now let's move on to the next point. And the next point is Warren Buffett does not even pay attention to smaller companies anymore. Like, he doesn't even look. And this is simply because Berkshire Hathaway is working with so much money now. So mm -hmm. even if they found a smaller company that seems to be a great opportunity, it wouldn't even be worth their time to throw money right. in it. Mm -hmm. Berkshire Hathaway simply focuses on the multi-billion dollar industry now right. because this is where they can actually deploy a significant a amount of Berkshire Hathaway's more. capital. And again, this is why there is so much more opportunity in these smaller securities is because these large hedge funds aren't even paying attention mm -hmm. and they're not even looking. All right, and moving on to the last point here, and this one is actually from Charlie Munger, when he said it was easier to find these opportunities 40 years ago. This is simply because 40 years ago, how they found their stocks was by flipping through books and reading manuals. And I'm sure that 40 years ago, not too many people were doing this. And since there wasn't that many people doing it, it means that there wasn't a lot of competition to find these undervalued smaller securities. So again, it all comes down to competition and how many people are actually looking for these opportunities. Mm -hmm. In today's world, pretty much anyone with a stock trading platform has access to what we call stock market screeners. What these screeners allow you to do is put in the specific information that you're looking for in a new investment, and these screeners will screen the entire stock market and allow you to find stocks within your range very, very quickly and efficiently. So essentially, now that everyone has access to just screen the entire market within a few seconds, it's getting harder and harder to find undervalued securities. But they are still out there. And here on my channel, I do my best to find these undervalued securities and these little wrinkles in the market and let my full audience know when I find them and what the opportunity could potentially be. But now, let's just quickly wrap up and summarize the video. And the first point that I want to make here is I personally believe that a lot of investors today think that these smaller cap companies are way too speculative to even pay attention to. And in reality, they're not. These smaller companies are simply just smaller businesses that are overlooked by Wall Street because institutional investors cannot put their money in them. But there are still great and wonderful businesses in small cap land. I mean, we all saw for ourselves that Warren Buffett bought Seas Candy for only $25 million. And you can see how great that investment turned out for him. So personally, I believe that if we apply all of the same investing principles to these smaller companies, then we can potentially find some great opportunities. So don't write off these smaller cap companies as pure speculation without doing additional digging into the actual company, mm -hmm. the management, and applying all of these great investment principles that you would apply to looking into any other investment. Now, obviously, not all small cap stocks are going to be great companies. And as I said, you still want to apply all of the same great investing principles that you would apply to looking at a larger cap investment. But to summarize everything, these small cap opportunities come from them being overlooked by institutional investors okay. and investors in general from thinking that they're just too speculative, even though they are truly wonderful businesses. But that's pretty much going to wrap up the video. And Okay, um, let me give my quick recap on everything as we close this thing out 
Hey, listen, um, first and foremost, I thought it was a really interesting video, very enlightening to me, um, being that, you know, I don't really deal too much in small cap just because, again, I I don't feel like speculating. I mean, he kind of made my they made the point for me um, that a lot of people, they don't deal in small cap markets because, again, um, most people don't want to take that gamble. They don't want to guess on that. Um, and the big boys, they don't even look at it because the volume isn't there. The business isn't big enough for them to really see any profit that would be significant. So um, to to kind of put this all into one big ball, um, if you want to grow small amounts of money, um, this is probably where you're going to want to look in these small cap companies, these companies who just start now, who's just trying to get big, getting the name for themselves. Now, the great thing about it is, like you said, it's not a whole lot of competition because the big boys ain't looking at them and people who don't want to guess, they not looking at them either. Um, some of the problems that lies in this, again, one is the biggest one is the risk factor. Now, if you're young, I mean, honestly speaking, that don't really matter because you have time to recover from that. And this is why I tell people, you know, if you go invest, you need to start investing early so that, you know, one, like I said before in a video, you don't have to put as much of your own money up to to get to the that big boy number down the road. But two, you got time to recover from that. You know, hey, let's say you 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 shoot your shot and it's not a good one. You know, the company doesn't do great. Okay, well, hey, you look, you take your L and you're able to move on. You know, you can maybe find another company um, and just keep digging. Now, what makes it hard, one, you know, um, is that that risk factor. And the second thing is um, there's a lot of information that you have to sift through. You know, like it was talking about 40 years ago, you know, there was a couple manuals that you look through and, you know, you can make a pretty decent decision on it. Um, but now, you know, a lot of people didn't want to do that is another thing. Again, the competition wasn't there. But now, you know, in this information age there, you have access to so much information. You know, one, you want information overload. There's so much information that you probably don't know what to look for, for one. And two, um, most people are not going to take that kind of time to do it. And and three, um, it's, just, it's just more trouble than a lot of people find worth it. Um, but if you're able to get past all those things, there's a huge opportunity. And that's how you turn a small amount of money into a lot of money by finding these companies, these undervalued companies, meaning, you know, hey, they got room to really do big things. And you get in there while the, the, um, the stock is inexpensive. This is how you're able to do it. So is it rare that it happens? Absolutely. Because not a whole lot of people beat the market. And Warren Buffett is one of those people who says that all the time. A lot of people are not going to beat that market. But you know, hey, you may find, you know, or, or catch a whiff of something that turns out to be great. You know, hey, Amazon was a small company back in the day and, you know, it, it turned into a big boy. So it may be somebody who did that kind of investing, even if they had a small amount of money, they got in there and now, you know, they're they're looking great and not in a position where they probably don't even look at the small guys anymore. But hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was, it's great knowledge, it's great um, perspective on the market helping you understand kind of, you know, how even the small guy can do great things. Now it's going to be risky, but hey, if the risk is worth it to you, by all means, I say go for it. You know, hey, you know, you only live once, you know, why not, you know, take your shot and take your chance. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now, if you want to learn more about investing, you want to learn more about personal finance, you want to learn about eliminating debt or things like that, hey, I want you to, um, jump on my website, www.moneymike313.com. Set yourself up a 30-minute appointment. It's absolutely free. We'll put together a plan for you. We talk about things like investing, talk about things like um, lowering your taxes, putting a little extra money in your pocket, building some great credit, and getting yourself out of debt a lot more quickly. And if that's something that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and book that free 30-minute appointment at moneymike313.com. And we'll get you started, get you on the right side of this thing. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you can know every time I drop a new video. I appreciate you guys jumping on. And as always, I love you. God loves you.
He smiles when he sees you, and he sees you all the time, so he's always smiling. So why aren't we? Hey, you guys have a great one. Thanks so much for tuning in. God bless you all. Go on.